Hey everyone, this is the uh, 4,000 mile big bore kit update for my CRF250L back here. Um, I'm going to talk about the big bore kit itself first, and then um, after that I'm going to talk about some of the uh, performance mods that people think are mandatory for this bike um, related to a big bore kit, or just in general for the bike. But um, yeah, big bore kit first, and then some knowledge that I've gained through uh, online forums and talking to people who have also done this. You don't really want to look at me this whole time I'm talking, so let's just look at the bike. Um, after the initial break-in oil changes, there has not been any metal in the oil. You know, the first couple oil changes when you initially run it, and then after some, a few miles, yeah, there's some metal in the oil. It's expected. You've got new parts seeding into each other. Uh, the two oil changes after that, and I'm about to do another one, and I've, you know, done a little uh, zip tie test. You know, you just dip the zip tie in there, wipe it on a white rag, see how it looks. It's looked clean, so I don't think it's wearing out any faster than the other engine, or the other cylinder did. Um, if I can hook up a bore scope, I'll do another video in the future where I actually look down inside the cylinder without taking it apart and see how it looks. But, uh, you know, you can see it's very muddy. Those of you that don't know, I've got a sidecar attached to this thing. Um, you know, it lugs this thing around just fine. It's, uh, it's a workhorse of an engine now. And honestly, I don't think I could go back to running this as a 250 bike. I just, I just don't think I could do it. It's, it's too much fun like this. Because honestly, if this, if this engine grenades, which I really, really doubt, I'm probably just going to drop like a 650 or a 500 in this thing. But I don't have any doubt about this engine going 50,000 miles. You know, there are guys out there that have 50, 60,000 miles on these bikes. You know, they're not many, but there are out, they are out there. And, you know, these engines are overbuilt and underpowered, which is kind of a Honda tradition. That's why, you know, old ones like this are still around. They're just bulletproof. Even with this mod, this 305 mod, you know, it's, it still feels tough and it runs strong and it's great. Um, uh, you know, zero complaints about it. Love it. I think it's worth every penny. Now for the portion of the show where I'm probably going to make people angry or make people feel happy because they agree with me. Uh, we'll talk about um, fuel tuners, and we're going to talk about um, exhaust and airbox mods. Now, a lot of people think those are necessary for this bike, even without the big bore kit, but a lot of people think, especially with the big bore kit, they're necessary. And, uh, oh, clutch. I'll talk about that one first because it won't take any time. I'm on the stock clutch. Never been opened, never been touched. Factory clutch, sidecar, big bore kit. There's videos of me doing hair scrambles with this. You know, it's a, well, not this time of year, but it's a daily driver most of the year. And, you know, I beat the crap out of this bike. And I think all these people that are running through clutches and saying that's a weak point of this bike don't know how to use a clutch. I mean, if, if I'm not destroying a clutch, how are they doing it, you know? But uh, there is a kit that gets rid of the judder spring in here, and you can put uh, another um, set of plates in there. I think CRFs only sells that as a kit. And then you can put um, heavier springs in there too, which I think I might do, you know, 20,000 miles from now when I need a clutch or, or whenever it is, just because I, th I think, you know, it could use a little bit heavier clutch. Um, mine's not slipping or anything. It's just it feels like a really light clutch pull, but even with the sidecar, it doesn't slip. You know, I can go wind it way up in first and then just quickly shift a third and give it the gas and it doesn't slip. So, you know, maybe, maybe I will just replace it with stock stuff. But anyway, that's conjecture. It, it doesn't matter. I, I'm not to that point yet. Fuel tuners. Uh, I'm running a Dobeck Performance AFR Plus EFI system, which is all controlled from my uh, air fuel ratio gauge here. You know, there's little buttons on there you can set um, your target AFR um, air fuel ratio, and then you can also 
change how much gas you want to add or subtract if you want to do it the other way um, under different load conditions. That's run off of a Bosch wideband oxygen sensor. And um, you get an actual air fuel reading with a, a wideband oxygen sensor, whereas the narrow band sensor that came on this engine stock, which um, it's probably a little dark, I apologize, but there's a plug in here. That factory oxygen sensor is currently sitting in my basement. This is a first gen model, you know, 2012 if you're uh, foreign, 2013 if it's a USA model, up to 2016. It didn't throw a code. Um, the uh, new gen models with the uh, bigger throttle body and different exhaust and different plastic, you know, I don't know what unplugging that oxygen sensor on that bike will do, but on these older ones, it doesn't throw a code. Um, when I first put the big bore kit in, I did have a code come up a couple of times, but turn the bike off, turn it back on, it went away. So it wasn't a permanent code. Um, it, it hasn't come back since. I don't know what it was. It could have been bad gas for all I know because, um, you know, I didn't get it back in time to plug the, uh, little thing in here to have it flash the code of what it was and it didn't ever come back. So I couldn't check it. Um, there is one guy on, I, I'm pretty sure he's on the Facebook group for this uh, bike specific group and I'm I know he's on adventure rider He didn't run a fuel tuner at all when he did his big bore kit um, You know so you know he said after a couple hundred kilometers it straightened itself out Maybe it did maybe it didn't I don't know it's what he's just what he said and I'm relaying the information You know I did the digging on this stuff so you guys don't have to um, Let's see here um, another thing that um, that guy did. He ended up putting a big bore in his bike, and then he ended up putting a 500 twin Honda engine in his bike. And the reason I bring that up is he used the stock airbox, stock snorkel, and that five and and filter. And that 500 twin ran fine through that stock 250L airbox. Now the reason I bring that up is I recently did a video on the airbox cover snap-in filter mod thing. People requested it. I didn't think it would make a difference, and I was right. Um, you know, there's plenty of people that agree with me on that. There's plenty of people that think I'm an idiot. But, um, you know, if that 500 can run fine pulling air through there, this is going to run fine. Um, another thing is there's a lot of engineering that goes into air boxes and the snorkel. And this even has a little chamber. You can see it right here that makes the airflow smooth and work correctly with the engine you know putting a big bore kit in there probably changed it a little bit so it's probably not as efficient as it could be but you're not going to improve on what honda made by drilling some holes in the airbox cover and again another thing the backfire screen on your factory filter that will outflow the filter and it's on the filtered side so it's not going to plug up Removing that backfire screen from your filter only increases the chances of setting your filter on fire in the event of a backfire. You're not going to add any power by removing that. It's a very popular mod, and it's cheap. You know, it's free, but it doesn't do anything. That's probably going to make a lot of people angry, and it will earn me some angry comments below. That airbox cover mod, it doesn't do anything. You know, you can go on the Facebook pages for this bike and Adventure Rider for the bike-specific thread and dig and dig and dig. But, you know, I've talked to people who've done this stuff. I've done it myself. Airbox mods don't do shit. <laughs> um, now, I'm going to talk about the exhaust, and then I'll kind of recap my thoughts on the big bore kit specifically, and then I'm going to go inside because it's uh, cold. My hands are getting stiff. I've got my factory pipe here. The factory quiet pipe and then on the bike right now is a gutted muffler it's just a factory shell and it's got one plate in it that's about 50 60 percent open area it's um that uh, mesh right there and then i've got a inch and a half exhaust tip with the factory spark arrestor welded in it it's about as loud as an fmf pipe but um it, it doesn't really do anything the difference between this pipe and that pipe Besides the noise is that when I'm running down the highway, high RPMs, you know, I twist the throttle, the bike 
moves a little bit more quickly um, than it would with this pipe. You know, it moves the the horsepower torque peak higher in the RPM range is all this open exhaust does. Um, and really, I don't really care for the noise, so I'm going back to the factory pipe. Um, I'd rather have the power in the mid-range grunty area for getting around town and getting around on trails versus the uh, the little highway horsepower peak I get with this one. Um, now for the controversial part that's probably going to earn me uh, some more angry comments. The pipe doesn't change horsepower at all with this big bore kit. Now, uh, go ahead and type your angry comment. I'll wait. Uh, <laughs> there's plenty of exhaust manufacturers out there. FMF, Big Gun, Yoshimura, Aero, Delkevic, um, GPR. I'm probably forgetting some. There's, there's a bunch out there that make pipes for this, um, especially if you go on Web Bike Japan. There's even more. But... Um, they all claim they add horsepower. Of course they all claim that. They're trying to sell you a product. Um, they add noise, sure. But, um, you know, I haven't dynoed this bike, but I've asked people who have dynoed their bike, you know, hey, can you send me your results, that kind of thing. The only thing this exhaust change does is move where your horsepower torque peak is. Same thing with the header. You know, you change the length, you change the diameter, that sort of thing. It just changes where your peak is. It doesn't increase the height of that horsepower torque peak on the dyno chart so that's just what i found i did the digging so you didn't have to i'm just relaying information and again i have not dynoed this bike i don't care to i know it has more power with the big bore kit i know it runs fine with a stock completely stock air box and a completely stock muffler now, some of you who really pay attention know I have a K&N air filter in there. And honestly, the only reason I got that is because it's serviceable. Um, I've actually got the service kit right here. You know, I just don't want to use a paper filter and throw it away constantly. I did not buy that for horsepower or increased flow or any of that crap because it is crap. Um, you know, you can check out my other videos. You know, I did do the air box lid mod but i took it right back off because it doesn't do anything so there's my information on things i found related to performance on this bike hopefully that saves you hours and hours and hours of digging online again the big bore 4,000 miles no excessive metal in the oil no more than usual no more than it had been with the 250 engine lots more power and torque I'm happy. The fuel tuner, Dobeck AFR Plus works great. I'm lugging around all kinds of weight and beating on it, and it just takes it, and it's going to last a very long time. If anything happens in the future with this engine, good or bad, I will let you guys know. So, uh, you know, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them below. Um, if you have angry comments, I don't care. <laughs> um, if you have, uh, you know, positive comments, great, post them down there. But uh, for now, it's like uh, 28 degrees, so I'm going to go inside. Have a good night.